All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for our 17th webinar in the Arctos series. Today we're joined by Michelle Koo and Carla Cicero from the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology at UC Berkeley, and they'll be showing us how to use QGIS to view and validate geospatial data associated with collecting localities in a new accession. Um, a couple of quick announcements before we begin. So first, we'll be taking a summer break for June, July, and August. So this will be our last webinar in the series until we start back again in the fall. So if you have any topic suggestions for future webinars, please include them in the IDIG bio survey following this presentation, and we'll do our best to incorporate your recommendations. Um, I also have here several resources, including links to our data portal and website, the Arctos handbook, and step-by-step -step tutorials, as well as an archive of our previous webinar recordings. Um, some of you in the audience may not be Arctos users, but if you are interested in learning more about Arctos or taking a virtual, virtual tour, um, be sure to check out our website at arctosdb.org. And finally, get to this last slide. Um, below are some Adobe Connect tips, so feel free to add your affiliation to your name by hovering over it and right-clicking to edit your info. Uh, we also do encourage you to type any questions you have in the chat box throughout the presentation, and we'll try to get to those as we move along. And I'll also leave several minutes at the end um, for your questions. So with that, I will go ahead and turn things over to Michelle. All right, so <clears throat> let me switch over to <clears throat> screen sharing. Make sure that people can see my screen. Let's just make sure this expands. So sorry if there's some lag time here between uh, my internet connection, but we'll try our best. So uh, we're going to spend some time talking um, uh, about getting your data from an Excel spreadsheet in this case, but it can be really any spreadsheet into some easy to map um, environments. And everything that we're going to be covering, examples of our data sets and links that we mentioned, screenshots, uh, will be posted on this website on the arctosdb.org uh, 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 website. So you'll be able to see this as well as a, uh, the webinar's video. So what we're going to be covering today will be Quantum GIS, which is an open source free GIS program that works across uh, multiple platforms, including PC, Macs, and Linux computers. Um, we'll use the long-term release, or LTR version, which currently is 3.4. But if you're using an older LTR version, what we're covering really isn't much different at all. Um, if you're using the latest cutting edge version, which I think right now is 3.6, soon to be 3.7 in a few weeks, um, again, nothing that we're doing is so advanced that uh, it wouldn't be covered in this. And then we're also going to be using Excel as our spreadsheet application, but these, um, again, these steps will also be useful and um, are applicable to, let's say, Google Spreadsheets or something um, um, easy and free to use. And of course, this, these are all live demos, so uh, just a, a pinch of forbearance is useful. <laughs> so first of all, let's uh, cover how you say uh, quantum GIS. So um, being data-driven um, science people actually have taken polls on this. Um, this is the, the latest one I pulled from their website. So majority of people apparently just say QGIS. Some people still say QGIS. Um, so uh, we're going to go with the majority uh, for the rest of this uh, presentation. So the two main use cases that we have for today are the uh, situation where you have data that you're preparing for bulk loading into Arctos or your uh, collection management system. So you may just have a lot of information that you need to quickly map and figure out um, higher geography, or you need to vet um, the coordinates and make sure that all your California um, loca locations are actually mapping in California and not China. So there are easy to do um, 
visual steps, of course, to do this, but the best way is to just map out the data, and make sure data is falling uh, where it's uh, supposed to. The other use case is um, data that perhaps has already been uploaded to Arctos, so you just need to double check an accession really fast, or you maybe you um, want to compare a, a previous accession with data that you're going to be uploading. So I'll show you a very quick and easy way of doing that in Google Maps um, directly from uh, uh, Arctos. So for those um, who are not using Arctos, though, um, again, a lot of these tools are um, easy uh, to apply in, another, in other situations as long as you have the, the proper data formatted. So here's the overall uh, webinar workshop goals that we have for this morning, or rather this afternoon, is uh, just being able to convert coordinates in different formats in your Excel spreadsheet um, to prepare them for a GIS. Uh, we will take a quick overview of uh, the Quantum GIS uh, work environment and install three plugins um, for this demo. And then we'll visualize it and, and navigate through uh, Quantum GIS and its base maps, um, show how to import base maps from any available uh, web mapping service or web feature service, and then again um, end with um, an Arctos specific example. So let's get started with the Excel spreadsheet conversion. So oftentimes when you get uh, coordinates from GPS units um, and from a variety of uh, researchers, you may have those for, uh, uh, coordinates in different formats. So the most common ones are decimal minutes and seconds, or decimal uh, uh, minutes, um, but those are uh, incompatible with most digital GIS, and so those need to be converted to decimal degrees. So we're going to use this simple formula for degrees, minutes, and seconds to convert those to decimal minutes. And I'll switch over to Excel now. So let's take a look at Excel. So this is a, 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 an actual spreadsheet uh, that Carla used to prepare data for bulk loading into Arctos. So you can see typical um, uh, headers here. Um, I'm going to turn those off real fast. And, you know, there's a lot of redundant data because, like I said, this is just a flat file getting ready for bulk loading. But you can see that she has a lot of um, GPS points that are sort of embedded in the verbatim locality. So there's a bit of cleanup. What she really needs to uh, focus in on is the higher geography and making sure that these GPS points, you know, were transcribed uh, incorrectly and are mapping where they say they're mapping. So she did a couple of pre-cleaning steps, she pulled out unique locality, uh, rather unique localities, and she did that quickly by filtering um, hey. on the Michelle, head. I think you, Michelle, sorry to interrupt, I think you might want to close out a QGIS that's doing the weird formatting thing so we can't see your complete spreadsheet. Oh, shoot, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, thanks for letting me know. I'm not sure what, we had this problem earlier to that. Let's see if this will help. There you go. Okay, so now we have the full screen. So here, here's a, a quick way of um, filtering through unique values in any of your columns. So in this case, um, you can um, select on localities, and here's the list of unique values in a given field. So I'm not going to spend time doing that. Um, this is a sort of like, you know, uh, the old cooking shows um, where we would actually kind of pre-bake a few things. So let's take a look at our unique list of localities now sorted into a new sheet and in this case, uh, we have, uh, she's extracted out the latitude and longitude from the uh, verbatim locality. And taking a look at the first one, this, this is um, a common format from a GPS unit. 
uh, known as uh, decimal minutes because we have the degrees and the minutes here and um, uh, broken out um, into its uh, um, uh, minute format. And then further on, we have those that minute format divided into seconds. So we have degrees, minutes, and seconds instead. And actually, they're sort of all mixed up in here. And that's just the latitude. So the longitude meant the same thing. So what um, is an easy and a quick way of doing this is, fix, uh, is, is first parsing out these um, individual components. So I would insert new columns into these, um, <clears throat> in between these uh, latitude and longitude and uh, use something called text to columns. And when you do that, it lets you delimit. And in this case, I think we can delimit easily by, um, by space. But you can also delimit by tabs or semicolons or any other character. And when you do that, you can um, gain new columns for degrees, um, minutes, and seconds. So let's take a, the, there's a, clearly some cleaning up that needs to happen on, on one of these fields. So um, we're going to leave that um, for work on your own. And when we move ahead then to our cleaned up sheet here, you can see I've added in some new columns. And I've already done my text to columns um, function. And now I have an individual column for degrees the minutes and the seconds um, for the decimal. The, um, it's not showing that, that worksheet completely. Have you clicked on the, the last worksheet? Yeah, I am on the last worksheet. So let's just, uh, let me just uh, try. that showing up now? No, it's like... Hmm. I think it's just having a little trouble um, catching up with my demonstration. Here we go. Hi, this is Deb. It's kind of there. It's just embedded in the middle of the screen, right? Is that what we're seeing? It's like a pop-up in the middle of the screen? Yeah. So you know what I'm going to try to do? Is there, let me see if I can just um, stop and then reshare my screen. I think that helped last time. Just hang on here. So, there we go. Yeah, there you go. That's better. Now, now it's caught up. All right, so as I was saying, um, from our previous unique sites sheet. I've uh, now used the function text to columns to create unique columns for, or rather columns dedicated to degrees, minutes, and seconds. I've included a new column called latitude, or you call it decimal latitude. And in there, I've embedded that formula, uh, which I shared in the previous screen. And so actually, let's take a look, a closer look at that. Um, that's simply the degrees added to oops, minutes divided by 60 and the seconds divided by 3,600, which again are just um, uh, the arcs of a circle. And you can do that and, um, oops, I keep, sorry, I keep hitting, uh, not hitting return. And you could do that and copy that formula straight down through the line, like we will for the longitude. So you can just copy that. And once you do that, it should um, copy that same formula um, straight down and convert all your degrees, minutes, and seconds, or decimal minutes, into decimal latitude and decimal longitude. And so I'll take a note that the datum for all of these, since they're from a GPS, uh, is WGS84, which is actually the default setting for most uh, GPS units. So if your researcher fails to note the datum, 
but they've told you it's from a G GPS, it's most likely WGS84. That's always a good safe bet to start off with. Um, other important fields here that we're going to be taking a look at is counties and state. And of course, we've got higher geography and verbatim locality and some um, habitat descriptions that might be useful. So let's uh, go back here. So our next stop will be um, opening up Quantum GIS. So like I said, we're, we'll assume that you've um, downloaded and installed Quantum GIS. We are not assuming that you have a strong GIS background. And um, unfortunately, in this webinar, we don't really have time to introduce you to the uh, wide, wonderful world of G GIS. But there are lots of other resources online to do so. There's, um, if you just Google, for instance, gentle intro to GIS by the quantum GIS folks, there's um, some tutorials and videos um, that are easy to find. If you're in California, you can attend one of our hands-on workshops that we hold at a UC field station each year, and that gets you definitely up and running and using uh, GIS and mapping things from um, the field stations that we encounter. So hopefully this will be, if you're not uh, accustomed to GIS software, that this will be sort of a, 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 an easy introduction that will make you motivated to learn more. So we're going to spend just a little bit of time taking a look at uh, quantum GIS, though, in this context. So at least you can use this if you're um, trying to curate and do data entry in a collection um, management system. So we'll look at the major panels and toolbars. We're going to spend some time with three plugins that extend the functionality of the base GIS program. We'll import our Excel spreadsheet points that we just um, converted, add some useful base maps, talk about adding more useful base maps and where to find them, and um, get started. So here's just a quick overview. This is what you're going to be encountering or something quite similar to this. Um, so you'll see that there's toolbars that, uh, and panels that you can um, toggle on and off. And there's a lot of information here to let you know uh, about the data that you're looking at. Let's take a look at now quantum itself. And this actually may be, hopefully, let me know if it's full screen or not. Okay, great. This looks pretty good. So this is actually what uh, most of you will encounter if you've just done a fresh install. And um, like I mentioned, um, there seems to be a dizzying array of um, icons and points uh, and uh, menu bars, so we'll try to make some sense of it. Um, first off, all of this, uh, this entire interface is completely customizable. So if you just right click on the on the uh, top bar, you can see that there's panels you can toggle on and off. You just need to um, check the box. And there's two bars that you can toggle on and off. I've actually set this so I have all the useful ones that we need for right now. Um, but for instance, um, the default installation um, version oftentimes uh, doesn't have our manage layers toolbar, so I just turned that off, but now I can bring that back in. And I like to have it on because it gives me all my um, shortcuts to adding data. So this mid blank screen and our sort of map viewer or map tableau, we also have a browser panel over here that lets us um, navigate your local um, directories and add data and the data gets that you can see have that you have access to is in this table of contents panel down below where again there's check boxes where you can toggle on and off um, the information so I'm not going to turn these on quite yet because I'm going to show you how we got the, uh, got there so the first stop we're going to do is go to our plugins me uh, menu so up at the top there's something called plugins and you can Click on Manage and Install Plugins. And when you do that, oh, look, we're right on the GBIF one. Um, 
when you do that, we're going to, uh, you'll see a whole number of additional plugins that will extend your functionality. And there's, you know, there's more and more of them that uh, show up. These are generally done by third party um, um, uh, developers. Um, and some of them can be very specific to, um, you know, that particular developer's need. But for today, we're going to install spreadsheets. So if you just search on at the top, make sure you're also in the all category. Um, you can search for spreadsheets and then hit install, which I've already done. We're also going to install HCM GIS. Oops. There we go. So this is what that looks like. And you can hit install, click on install. And we're, lastly, we're going to also uh, do lat long tools, which looks like this. And again, click on install. Now, you saw me looking at the GBIF occurrences. Uh, we won't have time, probably, to talk about this too much or, or demonstrate it. But um, for obviously, for this uh, crowd, this is, you know, uh, would be a, a very interesting and easy to um, uh, try out um, plugin. This is basically retrieving taxonomic searches from the GBIF API. Um, and I've been playing around with it. It works great. It's, um, you know, a lot of fun. So um, I encourage you to go check that out. Once you have those installed, you'll have new toolbars and new menus um, that just uh, magically appear in your Quantum GIS. Here's the GBIF, you know, icon. That was from me installing the GBIF um, plugin. But to bring in our Excel spreadsheet, we're going to use this point right here, this icon up down here. And this was the result of you installing the spreadsheet plugin. So we're going to click on Add Spreadsheet Layer. When you do that, you have a new <clears throat> window to populate. So we can browse um, to where our GIS data was. And so in this case, here's my GIS data. And when I open that up, um, the first option I have is to select which sheet I want to import. So you can only pick one, but this also gives you the flexibility of having a sheet that has, um, a workbook rather, that has multiple sheets. So we're going to pick the one that we prepped, um, which was Sites GIS Work. And when we do that, that brings in that particular set of Data. And you can see that um, this is basically what we, this is the computed um, column that we had uh, applied the formula to. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is check on geometry because our sheet has geometry. And um, since I used commonly used terms for X and Y, um, it automatically picked out longitude for my X field and latitude for my Y field. It doesn't always find decimal latitude or decimal longitude or des, you know, DEC underscore launch or some other um, abbreviation. So if that's the case, just pick it out from your, um, your version. And we're also going to um, check off this box that says show fields and attribute table. And lastly, we're going to pick a reference system. So this refers to the coordinate reference system of your data. And you can always double check what the coordinate reference system for your viewer is, which is down here in the lower right-hand corner. <clears throat> this code here is um, uh, one of the well-known universal codes for um, WGS84. And if you don't, if you're, you know, you don't need to memorize all these, but um, if you click on this, that'll open up your coordinate reference system. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But in this case, we're just going to um, click on the reference system and pick the default project CRS, project coordinate reference system. In this case, it, it you know, uh, given me the, the full, both the code and the name WGS84. 
which of course is also the datum of our points, so that seems appropriate, so we'll pick that and then hit OK. Actually, in this case, we're not going to, you, you'll hit OK and it'll add in, I've already added this data in, so I don't want to add it in twice. And so um, when you first add it in, um, those points may not be nice and red. So if that's the case, just double click on the, um, the table of contents icon and it'll pull up a symbology um, uh, layers properties. So you can, you can actually click through here and see all sorts of other things that you can do to your data. But symbology will let you pick um, and alter the color. It's going to do that. Um, so we'll spend, let's take a look at the full layer. So I just right clicked and went to zoom to layer so I can see all my points all at once. And um, that's comforting to see all the sites all at once. So we know that happened um, appropriately. But it's a little bit um, unuseful to see a bunch of red points on a white background. So let's add some base maps. And in this case, um, this is where the second plugin is useful. So you'll see up at the top, there's a menu item called HCM GIS. And actually, I'm not sure if you can see that in um, your version. Can you see, uh, can you see the top of the screen? Not quite. Not quite. OK, well, there is a screen, there is a menu called HCM GIS, which again is was a result of your installing the plugin. Yeah, I, I'm unclear why this is not showing, but um, you'll have to take my word for it. There seems to be something still being cut off. Um, and in the drop down menu, there's a, a choice to pick a base map. And here you can see that there's a whole a range of base maps here. These base maps are all web services, so you can bring these in um, quite easily. I just picked in this, this stamen toner, but let's just look at stamen terrain here. And um, the first thing you might wonder is where, what happened to my red points? Um, this is a good time to point out that in our table of contents, the draw order is in the order of um, the list. So it draws first these, these uh, raster layers, and that's why our points are actually below them. So if we just take our points and drag them to the top, you'll be able to see them again. So this is stamen um, terrain, and I can turn off a few of these. Actually, the one that we find most useful is the Esri topographic. So you can go in and pick that, which I already have loaded up here. And I'm going to turn that on right here. So this is Esri's um, cartographically pleasing base map based on USGS topo quads. So they've um, done the nice work of cleaning up the, the um, USGS topo quads and, and um, adding and taking away some of the artificial things um, that come across from all the scanning of the topo quads. And so it's zoom dependent. If you start zooming in, you'll get different layers of um, information. Um, zoomed in quite close, you can see uh, actually contours and elevation features and things like that. So I was, again, using the um, Zoom tool here. But you can see that oftentimes you can find yourself kind of lost in, um, in um, quantum uh, in the map viewer. So handy things to navigate would be to right click on, these uh, on the layer. And you can always zoom back to the full extent of the uh, layer. Um, Another nice uh, feature in Quantum is that it's bookmarks. So you can um, click on this icon here. That's supposed to be a page and a bookmark. And it'll open up a panel called Spatial Bookmarks. And in here, I actually um, created a few bookmarks. So that way, I can quickly return to specific areas that I'm interested in examining. So for instance, I'm interested in some of these points over here in Nevada. So I made a bookmark 
for Nevada, and I can click on that and return that, return there, and do that for the transect. And I can zoom into uh, some of my um, points that are near this very confusing uh, county boundaries. So how I ended up creating that, let's zoom back out here, zoom to layer. Um, how you how you create that is simply turning um, on your zoom tool, zooming into an area that you're interested in. Let's just zoom way into Marsh Creek here, and then add a new bookmark. If I click on that, I can now edit this and call it. And that'll give me now this um, spatial bookmark that I can return to whenever I need to. So let's go back to our county nexus right here. Um, I will actually take a, a pause for a moment here and ask if there's any questions or if there's anything I need to uh, review, if I was going too fast or if the webinar was um, lagging. Um, too far behind that there, you know, some point of clarification would be helpful. Is there anything? Any questions? Well, so far, so good. But feel free to enter questions in the chat. Yeah. So I, I we're happy to entertain any questions. So, um, so I uh, zoomed into this particular area uh, because. The county, I, it's probably difficult to see, but the county lines here are very confusing. They're not um, typical. They're following a lot of um, uh, creeks, and then they cut across sort of arbitrarily across ranges. So sometimes it's helpful to have a little extra base map. So there's actually this Esri boundaries and places that you can add in, and that, that is also helpful. So. Um, so I've just added in boundaries and places. I can double click on that and again, do some quick symbology edits and um, try to make those a little bit uh, uh, more visible and stand out. So you can see now the, the boundaries are a little bit easier to see. Um, these aren't always uh, available um, for, for every part of the world. So sometimes you might need to bring in some uh, special shape files that you might have gotten from a colleague. So you can add in some vector data by um, clicking on this icon. Um, I often call this the add V or add victory for vector data. So you could, that's um, an option. Um, but in this age of uh, web mapping, you could also bring in um, some authorized open source uh, web mapping uh, services. So the HCM GIS is really handy because it, it wraps up these web services in, in an easy to um, uh, insert um, drop down menu. But you can do this for any of, uh, of the web mapping services. And so I'll show you really quickly how you can um, add in any other customized uh, topo quad. So in your browser panel, you'll notice that, you know, like I said, you've got uh, access to your local directories, and then you have a lot of options here. And we're going to scroll down to WMS, WMTS, which is stand, just stands for Web Mapping Services. And um, there's a, some other ones, too. You'll see um, XYZ tiles. These are basically all web services of one flavor or, or another. So. Um, the one that I've just added was from USGS Topoquad, and I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you can. So what we're going to do is open this up and look at the um, connection. And how I came to find the proper URL, they're actually all posted on a website, which, again, will be linked in um, our... Uh, Let's have to open this up again. So, which are all linked in, in our webinar uh, information page. So, I don't know if you can see this. I can see that we're getting a little bit cut off, 
but um, I'm on the USGS National Map Viewer, and they have a website that lists all of their uh, web services. So if you click open one of these, it'll expand a list of all their base maps, and you can simply look at all the different kinds of um, uh, URLs that are available. There's REST APIs, there's web mapping services or web mapping um, uh, TS. So you can just grab, and uh, you can also open this up in ArcGIS.com uh, or an ArcMap and um, drill in and get more information about um, uh, the metadata. There's also some web feature services here, transportation, hydrography, uh, topo quads, you can get the specific topo quad data, shaded relief, satellite imagery. So a lot of this stuff is just available for free. There's um, um, <clears throat> elevation, uh, transportation, railroads, uh, like I said, USG, uh, USGS topo quads of different uh, scales. So these are useful to go and explore. And in the case of um, our USGS topo base map, um, I simply just right clicked on the link and copied the link address. So I didn't actually um, it, copy. Can you see that now? Yeah, we can see that, yeah. Carol has a question, though. Oh, sure, shoot. Um, how do you get the icons on the left to appear? I am using QGIS 3.4.7 and want to add those. Oh, right, back here. I showed yeah. this earlier. You just have to, you just have to right click and open up your Manage Layers toolbar. Just make sure that's checked, and that toggles it on and off. Thanks. And Emily that's put the uh, the link to the viewer um, the services in the chat window because it was hard. Yeah, to great. Thanks. Like I said, we'll make sure that this is all um, uh, available as well on the uh, Arctos DB Learn site. So let's go, let me open up that window again here. So you can just add in a new connection and I gave it this um, easier to remember name, USGS Topoquad, I know very inventive. I copied in that URL that I had on my clipboard into the next um, field. Um, I left all this as default, there's nothing extra, this is all open source, um, your taxpayer dollars already paid for it, so there's no authentication needed, and then you can just hit OK. And then that ad adds in this new um, uh, option here, and I am not seeing it show up when I am looking um, on your um, browser panel, but you would just need to sc uh, scroll down to WMS and then kind of drill down, open up those little carrots, and you'll see USGS Topo Quad, and then there's layers, and then you can um, click on the, the, the bottommost layer, and that will, if you double click on that, that'll be added to your table of contents. I'm not gonna do that right now because um, the web connection may be a little bit slow, and um, since we're looking at California, we actually have a lot of great base maps already available. So, um, but these are options in case you're looking for other parts of uh, California or the base maps aren't sufficient. So you can you can do that. Um, and like I said, this is um, um, if you search for uh, a particular region and web mapping services free or open source, um, you'll find other services that are um, available. And as long as you get that URL, you can add in any other new connections. And your Quantum GIS will usually will remember which ones um, you've already added previously, so you won't need to continue to add them in. So let's take a look here um, at the editing features, because we've now gotten our points embedded here, and we've gotten our some base maps, so we can make some sense out of them. And um, but now we really need to drill down into the, the data. So I'm gonna right click on my MVZ samples points again. I'm gonna open the attribute table link. And um, this gives me a peek again at our uh, table. And you can see all of the data 
that was in the original spreadsheet. But this is a little inconvenient. So you can actually, there's, um, Quantum has some really great ways of looking at data all at once. So you can actually just dock this. There's a little icon here. Just click on that. And that just drops it into the bottom. So it kind of gets some stuff out of the way. And um, now my attributes table and my map are fully uh, interactive. So I can grab my polygon select tool here and I can um, select a few points up here and they'll be highlighted. So I can, I can actually uh, click on my move selection to the top and those four points will, sh or sorry, five points, I guess there's five points, <laughs> will show up um, in the bottom table. So now I know which ones I'm looking at. And I can see that I've also all selected them to be in Calaveras County. And um, I don't think that's right. I think they're supposed to be in um, Alpine County. So I, I'm going to want to make some changes. So I'm going to toggle the editing mode. So there's a pencil here. There's actually two ways of doing that. You can you know, click on this when you're in the table view. You can also uh, right click on your layers. And then there's always your toggle editing. And if you have your toggle editing bar um, toolbar available, it'll be up at the top too. And so here you can see now I can start editing any of the table contents, including um, my county. And I think it should be Alpine. So that's my first correction. Then you can just copy and paste those. In. So, and then you, of course, um, you're going to want to save. So um, <clears throat> this is true of any kind of computer work. You save early and often, so uh, remember to save. <laughs> you can also hit the top um, floppy disk icon to save your entire project so you don't have to reopen everything again. So now I've just uh, edited and saved my county. Um, that was a pretty easy one because it was more or less an attribute. Oh, oops, I missed one here. Just uh, grab this again. So there we go. So I can pop them back at the top here. It's not showing up. I'm not sure why he's not showing up. Is that Ebbets Pass? Just update. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's not showing up here. This is the live demo part. Let's just make sure. So I'm going to actually right click and then just hit the identify results. Um, and oh, it is already Alpine County. So I guess that one was one that we had already changed. OK, so that was just the identify tool. All right, so that's um, one of the um, uh, ways you can edit the attributes easily. Another way sometimes is editing it spatially so you can actually um, we're still in the edit mode so you can see that there's the pencil icon and I've got a pencil icon also on my uh, layer and I've got this highlighted over here and so if I click on my uh, vertex tool I can click on that and this will let me now right click on any point and it'll give me the X and Y coordinates and I can edit those and move my point around and save those as well. I don't really want to do that because I think these are GPS points that are pretty good, but that, that may be something that you need to do. Other ways of uh, grabbing coordinates interactively, um, uh, I'm going to actually turn this off for a second. Um, it w you could do that through the third plugin tool that we used, and that one was called the Lat Long tool. So when we put in lat long tools, we, um, uh, um, the plugin installs this drop down menu here. So let's see, it's under plugins and lat long tools. Let's see if it'll, there we go. So now you can see that we've got some uh, new, new toolbars. It also includes this, this set of toolbars right here. So these icons here. And again, you can, you can toggle these on and off by just right clicking on the toolbars and clicking, turning these on and off. 
but we'll keep it on because it's useful to have it right up front. Now, what's nice about these is that it lets me grab uh, lat and longs straight off the map. So I can click on any point and it'll copy the coordinates directly to my clipboard and I can copy paste them someplace. Um, one thing that's a little bit annoying is, you know, I might click here, but I don't see my any points. I don't know where my point is. So you could just go into the plugins, the settings, and make sure that um, the option show marker on the map is checked on. And that lets you now drop in these X's everywhere. <sighs> now, so let's just say you have a transect. I've been reading up on um, the the field note journal, and I know this researcher was walking up the creek. So you can actually take a look at this um, lat long tool called multi location zoom, and this lets me now record those lat and longs that I've just been clicking around the map. So you can see all of these um, markers here. And so as I click on these, these will actually show up here too. Um, and then what I can do is actually uh, save these. I can save these. Um, um, there we go. Let's just click a few more here. I can save these as a um, file, or I can actually save them as here we go as a as a file, or I can save them actually as a new vector layer, which will then show up on my table of contents. So. This is a handy way of also just creating a vector file of points. It only works on points, obviously. So lat long tools is um, a useful plugin in this context. So I've uh, reviewed um, using the spreadsheet plugin to import our uh, data and um, how we can. Yes. Can I ask a question. So when you edited the yeah, sure. when you edited the attributes table in QGIS and saved it, is it saving it then in your original directory? Or like yes, it's saving to my original uh, QGIS, oh, sorry, Excel spreadsheet. So just to give you a little bit, a little bit of an understanding of what happens, when I'm create, we're using this spreadsheet tool button to add in an Excel spreadsheet, it's actually creating another file called the VRT file, which is um, the spatially enabled version, so to speak, um, for your data. And um, this brings up a good qu question, actually, because um, in certain versions of the uh, spreadsheet plugin, um, for Max, you can save directly back to your Excel spreadsheet. In a PC, um, this same version of the plugin doesn't let you do that. So alternatively, you can export your data um, after you've saved it. So again, right click and then there's this export feature and you can save it actually as a um, new shape file, which you can then fully edit and, and do whatever you need to. So that would just be um, picking as, as an Esri shapefile and creating a, a shapefile that you can fully edit. And then you can also export the table, resulting table, back out as a CSV or Excel spreadsheet. I mean, you could also save this also as an Excel spreadsheet too. So you, you, can, you might need to do those extra steps if you're in a PC and it's not letting you save directly to a PC. And how do you know that? Because that option just it won't let you save. You'll try to save. You'll get either you. It, sometimes you don't even get an error. The option just doesn't um, it, it, um, expose itself to you. Alternatively, you could also use lat long tools and save your Excel, uh, your rather your coordinates to a separate file or a spreadsheet. Okay, thanks. So yeah, so there's a couple of different options. Um, and you may have to see which one works best for you. Um, so like I said, so that's a great question. If there's any other ones, just jump in here. I'm just kind of doing an overview of what we learned here so far with the three different plugins. And um, uh, I will say that um, topo quads are really great. Um, 
and useful ones. I will also add in a link in our resource page for looking up historic topo quads, um, which um, unfortunately you can download, but you need to import the download them as um, PDFs. But um, their their new historic um, USGS website is great for um, exploring them, at least in their online browser. And then we talked about adding in web mapping services from any any freely available web source. So uh, before I leave uh, Quantum GIS, I just want to make sure that um, we don't have any uh, specific questions open, because I'm going to switch gears a little bit and go back to Arctos. Sorry that was so fast, but um, like I said, hopefully that'll um, uh, get you excited about learning more. So let's take a look at this old refresh here. Actually, maybe I need to close this again. So let's take a look now at um, our last slide on Arctos. So as most of you guys know, we just, this is an Arctos-sponsored webinar. So we're going to go back to our Arctos um, portal. And um, this is something that is a really useful, but I think uh, commonly overlooked uh, function of Arctos. And uh, this works best with any results from a specimen search. So in this case, I'm actually going to um, kind of cheat a little bit and go to one of my save searches. So let's see, I was just recently looking at random muscosa tissue. So we're going to jump over to that. If you also noticed, I am logged in as myself. So um, you will need to be logged in if you are an Arctos user. And I'm not sure why it's, sorry I didn't preload this, this little search here. And again, this could be the, the internet being a little bit slow in this room. While we're waiting for that, I'll actually, since I have the tab open, we'll just take a quick peek at the USGS Historic Topographic Map Explorer. This is the historic uh, topo quad that I was uh, referring to. You can actually search for different places, and then it'll give you some um, timelines for areas that it actually has some base maps for. So um, here's one from 1891. Um, so here's its footprint. Uh, and then you could also jump ahead to 1963. So you can see that it has a variety of different scales and different um, um, years available. Um, if you want the 24,000 uh, scale, the 10 and a half minute map, then keep to this bottom panel here. Um, and that's really useful, especially if you're looking at um, water boundaries or other feature, uh, geographic features that may be changing a lot through time. So let's take a look at Arctos. Oh my goodness, we had a time out. This is part of the fun of, sorry, that was my uh, login timed out. Let's see if I can do that again. You needed, like I said, this is a, you need to have a, you need to be logged in. You don't need special permissions per se, but you do need to be a registered user to do this function. So this is my safe search for random muscosa um, specimens that have tissues. And so this looks familiar if you've, if you've used um, Arctos and searched for um, specimens before. Um, what I have available, though, to me as a registered user is this uh, drop down called Tools, Map, Customize, or Download. And in this case, I'm going to um, select one of the mapping tool options, which is um, Map Results in Google Maps. So I'm just going to click on that. And that should give me the option to download a KML or download a KML link file. So if you're an Arctos um, Collections user, um, try 
give that a try. That's the one we're going to select for today. So we're going to hit OK. And now we've got that in my, um, in my finder. And I'm going to go to Google My Maps. So if you go to Google My Maps, it'll open up to this um, interface. And um, I'm logged in with my Google account right here, you can see. And you can also see I have a bunch of other Google Maps here. And I'm going to create a new map right, right now, right in front of you. It's just a blank map with the Google base maps. And then you can hit Import. And from here, I'm just going to take my KML that was downloaded from Arctos and drag it in here. And that's going to take a second to load up. And when it does that, I now have my new map right here. And you can change the colors. And you know you can do all sorts of other things here, you know, more icons. So, um, but you know, like I said, it just gives you some options here. But most importantly, it gives me links. And that's actually what's really exciting here. So I can kind of, I can zoom in. I can still change, um, here we can zoom in a little bit more. We can take a look at, um, we can change out the base map so I can see my data in, uh, again, different contexts. These are all random muscosa, so luckily they're not down in the valley. They're actually up in the, in the mountains, as they should be. So, um, but in this case, I'm not, really I'm not really editing localities, though I could easily. And if I click on a point, I have now links back to my specimen detail page. So I can click on this, and that should bring me back to um, that specific specimen's um, information. So here I can take a look at here and see um, all the details, um, including who collected it, does it have a GenBank record, uh, and any of the other important information I might need. So I can keep, I can keep exploring my um, specimens in that way. And this is um, something that's handy because now I can also title this map um, and share this with others. Um, and they, they have the access to these um, and the Arctos websites as well. So I'm going to take a look at that. So um, that's uh, how to map localities events from Arctos in a quick and easy manner. And um, of course, also share that information um, with others who are not, uh, who may not be Arctos users in a quick and easy fashion. So are there any questions here? Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah, go ahead. If anyone wants to type in the chat or your microphones are enabled, if you'd like to speak, just make sure you turn your microphone green at the top of your screen, we'll be able to hear you. <clears throat> um, while we're waiting for some questions, I'm just going to copy the survey link into the chat. So if you wouldn't mind just taking the one or two minutes to fill that out, it's really useful, uh, your feedback for iDigBio and for the Arctos Working Group. And we try to incorporate sort of any, any suggestions into our future webinars. See if there's any questions. Well, happy mapping then. <laughs> Hopefully this will also uh, get you excited to learn more about GIS. Yeah, I think this will be very useful. All right, well, if we don't have any questions, um, we'll have this recording up for you. and. Um, Feel free to contact us over email if you have anything. Thanks, Michelle. That was great, despite the technical yeah. difficulties. <laughs> yes, thanks a lot, Emily. Yeah, and actually, maybe lastly, you could put the link to the um, where it will appear on our arctosdb.org uh, website, all the resources. We'll be sure to sure. link things. So it's a little bit of a work in progress, um, and the video will also be embedded there, and that's available.
Thank you. Yeah, thanks.